in and out my head, sorry. Their management and their governance style is different than any other supposedly vocational school in the whole state. It's unique. It's totally, and we just, as they, I mean, and they're gearing up for a capital plan to replace their buildings and equipment and so forth, which is important, but we just can't, as we gear up towards meeting our, our weaknesses and, our, and things we need to change, we can't then go pay. I mean, it's like them coming over here and asking for CPA money to do the, the uh, courthouse. That, that's, that's See, it be, but because every student has an opportunity to go to a Volk school, if they choose to go to Franklin Tech, let's say, because Smith Volk doesn't carry what program they want, they can go to Smith Volk. I mean, they can go to Greenfield, or they can go down to That's true. another one. I mean, so they're not really bounded to go to Smith School. They're, right. you know, but any Volk school that they want to go to, we have a commitment to go to Smith School if they carry the program that the child is interested in. But mm -hmm. other than that, if they don't have it, they can go wherever that right. other program is. Uh, tell me about that commitment. If if there's an electrical setup at Pathfinder and there's electrical setup at Franklin Tech and there's a Franklin and there's a electrical over at Smith Volk, we are obligated to send our students Correct. to Smith Volk. Correct. Why? It's Hampshire County. Uh, okay, so we're, it's we're a participating community. Yeah. So so really, there's sort of like a mini. Sorry to get this off the top stop topic here, but so they're really like a mini community college system. Right. Because, I mean, up Hampshire County. Well, yeah, but you can go anywhere you want to go. So. Except the community college is cheaper. Have any of yes, your letters the worked at all? Have much you, cheaper. Linda, have you gotten any feedback at all from any of the letters that you sent? Do, do they send you a cor no, courtesy the, letter the, back? When I think Molly was on the school committee in the year that we got notice that the assessment was going up 13%, and we got the notice in May, beginning of May, and um, we certainly contacted all of our legislators then and said you know, there's, it's, it's impossibly hard to absorb that kind of impact this late into the budget season. And they agreed. They felt they for agree. us. They agreed yeah. and yeah. told you to pay it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just came out of school. Mm -hmm. School choice, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's definitely a uh, threat you see on the horizon from outside. Yeah. All right. So. Well, we'll just bring in the, I think we should just schedule where we can uh, start having some of these um, departments come in and go over their SWOT analysis at our meeting, not necessarily our time board meeting, but we would have to. Yeah, I think we have to. It'd be hard to. We can start. I think we should start with the tri board meeting. That gives them a month to actually prepare for them, or two two weeks to prepare, and then we can schedule them as we go along in, uh, in uh, September. Okay. Plus, it's it's everybody's in the same room. That's talking it. finances in the room. We're in the room, and one of the problem last time was understanding between the two boards what was right. where we were heading with it. Yeah. So let's keep everybody's management you know, okay. idealism yeah. together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, I mean, I don't think you can do all of them. You can't. You, you can't. can't. You're going to have to break it up over them. that month, yeah. I think. So I just had a process question here. So uh, Bridget is going to put together a large matrix of a summary of everybody's uh, SWOT analyses. Uh, you're going to get me questions to give to the departments. We're going to be bringing the departments in for uh, September 2nd. We'll start on we'll September 2nd. Yeah. Yep. Um, it might be helpful to share this. I know this is a public document. It's online already, but it might be helpful for the other departments to have the whole package so that they can see how, you know, what does it look like. Sure. Um, and that maybe spark and, yeah. further input as well. And definitely the Reader's Digest summary for them so they can right. see. Because if you actually put it all together and have it color coded a little bit, it'll be easier for them. Can we get in large print too, Bridget? <laughs> <laughs> you can have my glasses on. Yeah, right. Would the uh, as, as part of this process, were you going to do a SWOT analysis of uh, select board members? You know, I was thinking about that. Yeah. And I was thinking maybe we should do something similar to that. Mm -hmm. And how we should go about doing that. Or to be the board, you'd have to meet as a board and do it on 
board members. Board meetings meeting. like board members and to collect individually, you could do it in the comfort of your home, mm -hmm. but it obviously becomes a public document. Right. I mean, we can work on our own. Let's work on our own and combine them, too. And then too. Bring, them, yeah. Come, yeah. bring them back together. Yeah. For when? September 1st. So, yes, should we kick it off? Yeah, if we have it all by, if we have ours together by the, the third week of August. Since everybody has their evals done too. Everyone has their evals done except okay. for one person. I see. Mm -hmm. Guess who? <laughs> you know, the chair gets a little leniency, don't they? No. <laughs> Actually, no. Oh, man. Um, so the one's the SWAT and else? So the third week of, of August. Oh, that's way over there. I can't yeah. see that one. What do you okay, for? so by the 21st? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, actually, if you do it by the 19th, by 19th okay. then we can have it in the packet for the meeting on the... Are we meeting on the 26th? No. No, no, no we're not meeting on the 26th. I'm back on the 24th. So actually, yeah, if you want to have it to me by the 21st, that's fine. Okay. And we'll be back. We'll have it in your box at Town Hall. Yes. If anybody else wants to throw theirs in from the um, school committee and the finance committee, we'll add yours to it as well. So it's a comments, comments on and what you think the strength and weaknesses and threats are. So with the police chief here, did you want to give us any? Do you want to say anything about yours or about my SWAT? Um, well, I mean, I said a little bit earlier. I actually uh, I found it um, I found it helpful for myself, you know, not not just to, to for the board to elicit information from me um, about the department, but I found it helpful that I was able to really, like I said, get some maybe television and really look hard at the department the way I see it right now. Um, I hate to make the suggestion that the other department heads are watching, but uh, I think it would be a good exercise to do at some point in the future as well to see, you know, uh, any progress we can make. But that was really the thing that I saw the most, you know, that I, I found the most helpful was that I was able to really look at the strength, strengths of our department, weaknesses, and all the other issues in between. You know, what I'm just wondering is, um, I mean, I'm more than happy to do the SWOT analysis, although I feel like it's cheating a bit because obviously most of the work's been done by the people who really know what's going on. And there may be a few things that, you know, I, don't, I didn't see that I want to add or something like that. But um, might it might it be time better spent if over the next few weeks as individual select board members we focus in on the whole intent of this as you said is to help the, have this help inform um, budget priorities as well as a, an actual plan for the for the next year one two three or whatever that maybe we start looking in from our perspective um, looking for what we deem to be priorities for the town coming out of this Actually, ask, I was kind of, what? that was my thought of what we were doing when we dope through ours together, so that's a better way to clarify it. Okay. Yeah. So, yes, when we're making our SWAT, it's basically we're reviewing and putting together our priorities. That's a better way to say it. Okay. Very fair. Ten years ago, every department sat together in one room and, you know, not as, you know, with individuals there and, and sat down and had this and hash this out in a three hour thing just so that everybody understood what was coming up. And then it was a lot of old Lowe's issues and things like that that were coming in that kind of cross reference, you know, between different departments. And it was extremely helpful for everybody to sit down in the same room and understand what everybody else was going through, whether it was the police department or the fire department or the schools. Mm -hmm. Everybody sat in the same room and said, you know, geez, this is, these are the major issues that are addressing the town of Hadley that are coming up in the future. I know you probably don't watch my planning board meeting or my select board meeting, but these are really important things that are coming up, whether it's designing a water filtration system or whether we're, you know, setting up, uh, trying to understand the planning boards, uh, what they need for help with regards to 500 feet off of Route 9 for planning. I, mean, I think it's important for anything that we can do to bring information to all the departments so that they, everybody functions and works as a team the best that we can. So 
And I think with this exercise, you've taken a big step forward to uh, creating a strategic plan for the town. This really is the link to the next part of the process here. Any other comments about the, the SWATs for now? So our other agenda item was uh, looking at the five-year projection or the revised projection. It's actually four years, I think, now. So we have 16 on here, and then we have two year, four outline years. So the one thing I'll start off, the one thing I was noticing is that we wrap up, as we're wrapping up 15, we didn't make our projected uh, tax revenue. We're a little short there. We made up more money in what we call the other, um, local receipts was higher. Um, the local receipts were higher, but then our tax revenue, we didn't make our projection. Is there any kind of common theme why or it was lower this year or is it just well, out the, of curiosity? The, the, the first thing to say is, is that uh, we were below $100,000 uh, short on the uh, on tax collection, so that is uh, that is a goal that we've been trying to achieve for several years, and we almost made it last year, except for the the, the bankruptcy on Route Nine. Uh, at uh, at one of the businesses, put us a little bit above a uh, hundred thousand. So we're actually making progress on this. The, that gap is uh, made up by prior years payments, so years. Taxes that were owed in, owed in one year are paid in a uh, in a, the current year, and so those payments are always more than the uh, receivables. So we actually didn't lose any uh, tax money there; it's just backfilled from another source. Um, so late tax payments from last year's previous off billings offset the, the hundred thousand or the less than hundred thousand okay. that we yeah. didn't collect. Um, so, we have people who uh, uh, have trouble making their tax payments. We always have uh, plans in place for folks. If they come in, we work with them. Uh, we work with them as best as we possibly can to put together uh, affordable payment schedules, but it does have an impact upon the tax collection for uh, 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 in, a, in a fiscal year. So, is it a reoccurring number of people that have problems or does it change there, every... There are some frequent flyers, yes. There are <laughs> other people who um, get into trouble one way or the other because of life circumstances and again we try to work with them. Would you say that re number is relatively consistent? Yes. Okay. So then saying it's relatively consistent, the shortage of being 1% off is probably going to stay but having more than 1% coming back to us from prior years is going to make up that shortfall. Correct. So there's really no reason to change. My thought process is if it's if it's a chronic issue and it's something we see it's getting worse, that we need to lower our, our estimates for revenues coming in. And you're saying no, it kind of is balanced out. It's not really a big deal. Right. So the uh, policy, the, the best management practice uh, policies uh, out there for cities and towns in general is uh, you should be collecting somewhere about uh, 97 percent, 95 to 97 percent of your of your commitment. Uh, we are well above that. We're, we're 99 or 98 percent. So we're we're exceeding the best me measurement uh, uh, policies. We have our own policy which is above two. Uh, two uh, less than two percent. I think it's one point seven percent, if I can remember the the uh, the figure correctly. And we're c consistently meeting and exceeding that uh, that uh, that's that threshold. So we're doing very very well with respect to collections. We have we utilize all of our collection tools that we can in order to make sure that uh, taxes remain current and again if people do run into trouble we will work with them in order to set up affordable payment plans. I was noticing that everybody, everybody probably except my family is supporting the 
the uh, motor vehicles excise tax increase since all my cars are pretty old and I haven't bought a new one lately. I'm, I must say I appreciate the people who are buying new ones to help us keep our excise tax up. I'll have to work on that. I think we should appreciate the people who are eating out at our restaurants, most yes. of all. And sleeping in our hotels. And the hotels. And the hotels. The, the, the meals tax has been a real win for the town of Hadley. We, uh, we adopted that back in fiscal year 2010. Uh, and uh, we, I always expected that we would, res we would see some, uh, a wave uh, pattern in our collections that there would be off seasons and fast seasons and no it's been very very consistently steady uh, month by month quarter by quarter uh, I calculate that our restaurants sell three million dollars worth of uh, food every month every month three million three million in order for us to be making those kinds of numbers. Is that Texas Longhorn breaking ground? Yes. Roadhouse. 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 Soon. Well, no, they, 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 they broke the ground. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, when you say breaking the ground, are they taxably breaking no, the ground? No. No. no, not yet. Close. So, yes, the meals tax has been a real win for the town of Hadley. Another one. Yeah, Route 99. Route 99 is the bottom. Route 99 is the bottom. Yeah. Actually, I don't, well, Zoe's, we, we need somebody to take over Zoe. Right. Actually, we don't have a vacant. Do we have any vacant restaurants? Uh, yeah. Seven Sisters. No, will there someone buy Pizza someone Hut? Not that. He's yeah. supposed to be reopening. No, it's not. Fell through. Fell through. Fell through. Mm -hmm. So we have Pizza Hut. It's always. It's always. But it is always good to eat at local establishments. The old ground round. Oh, yeah. I miss that place. And Buffalo Wild Wings. Buffalo Wild Wings. The mall, has, the mall has a lot of them. Yeah. The Friendlies has been boarded up in the mall for a long time. Well, and I know we're nowhere near this, and we you know, don't have the luxury like Amherst to be able to fund something like this, even though it took probably a decade. But from an economic development standpoint, this is exactly the conversation that I think you know, we should really wrap the, the planning board and the tax assessor in you know, we very complacently, because we never, I mean, we just sit by and then these things just kind of evolve and happen. But with the um, issues around, you know, Berkshire gas and the stuff. Threat, the threat, that's a, what slowing. bigger threat is in there than Amherst than not having gas for the restaurants? Right. But, uh, you know, having the ability to focus on economic development and actually advertise to get some of these places filled would be a really good thing. Yeah. You mentioned uh, motor vehicle excise tax. Uh, one of the things, yeah. one, of the, one of the things that we can do that doesn't cost us money to boost those sales is we can uh, talk to our legislative delegation about the depreciation schedule on the uh, on motor vehicle excise. It's a very steep drop off after the first couple of years, and if that could be flattened out a little bit, that would bring Charge in a lot. Great. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have to buy a new car. Are the insurance company is going to reimburse more for cars after they're driven off of the dealer lot? <laughs> <laughs> have the pilot programs been reviewed annually, or when do they get reviewed? Okay, so we have several pilot programs. Uh, uh, the, the first one, the big one, is the um, is the uh, the Mountain. one that shows up on the cherry sheet. That's the uh, payment from the state for. Uh, property that the state owns in the town of Hadley. We're somewhere around half of where we should be. There was a big readjustment in the formula, I want to say 10 years ago. So we're collecting a little bit better than we were 10 years ago, but that figure is about half of what it should be. Uh, and so that's another area that we can talk to our legislative delegation. Um, then there are pilot payments of various stripes that uh, there are there's property that another town owns in, in Hadley that they pay uh, property tax on. The state pays property tax on Golden Court, uh, and the federal government pays a pilot payment on uh, some of the preserved land out in the, uh, the meadows over at uh, Moody Bridge Road. Uh, then there's the pilot payments for the uh, solar arrays, and so we're getting uh, money that way. Uh, I know there's always a push to look at taxable 
taxing non-taxable properties, uh, universities, uh, private institutions, places of worship, uh, places like that. Uh, I don't know if there's been any traction on that. I've always seen that as, as you could spend a lot of time chasing that and never get anywhere. Uh, Steve Kulik filed legislation yeah. for, um, for that. It's highly supported by MMA. But we'll see. Yeah, I just don't see any. I don't, I don't think that dog will hunt. So then on the rest of the, so one other thing on the budget is when we start looking at the expenditures that we projected in this, is it just a flat percentage increase or is it actually a number that goes with a certain line, like salaries went up a, a percentage for because of contracts or expected contracts, or is it just straight 2% or 3% increase is what we projected here? So the projections there, uh, as much as I possibly could, I the numbers for FY 2020 are the ones that I put together in order to update this uh, analysis. But for FY um, 17 through 19, these are numbers that, for the most part, I took from uh, a projection that you asked the departments to perform a year and a half ago. So those are those numbers, uh, with a couple of exceptions where I thought that things changed uh, so dramatically that we needed to update that number. I thought so, we were going to take a look at the last two years and what the actuals were versus what the projections were to try to come up with whether or not our projections are reasonable. Right. So that's part of what was what is new and different about this analysis. So I sat down with Molly and she showed me what would be most helpful to the board. So that's that I included. A, I dropped off some of the older information, which was so old that it, we didn't think that it was uh, important to you anymore, and added columns uh, in such a way as it wouldn't reduce the font so that it would be unreadable. The only thing that's not in there right now because the books weren't closed right. is FY15 actual. Um, David and I had talked about that, so that's kind of one foot in, one foot out, right? Right, right. Right. Okay, and then for 2020? For 2020, so wherever I, I went over through the uh, individual budgets uh, and looked at the projections and, and where they said that this would, well, first of all, for personnel, I included a 2% COLA only. Um, so that's for personnel. Uh, and that's in line with what was uh, discussed uh, for the projection a year and a half ago. where where there were sufficient notes in the individual budget submissions from departments, um, I increased lines, particular lines, by whatever percentage was in line with history. So, um, you know, it's, it's as close as I can get to a number that I think is... Uh, realistic. Yeah, realistic. There are certain accounts that are special, so we have a 10-year OPEB uh, ramp up uh, program where we're adding $80,000 annually to our OPEB contribution. So, where we had that arithmetic progression, I just kept that in place. Okay. Can I point one other thing out too? Um, on this page, this summary page, right? Um, David and I talked about this. So, at, at the last tri board meeting, the uh, request was made that David provide a reconciliation so that if we're looking at the town meeting voted number that we can tie that back to the column he has here because remember in one in one management view we're taking out the enterprise funds and then the state assessments are handled um, presented differently so that's this 15 million 878 so You've done that for, um, this is FY16, right? That's right. Yeah, so FY16. So the reconciliation is there just to remind us why those numbers are different. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing that um, we didn't have a chance to tackle is this middle section, the transfer from other funds. Yeah, it says free cash to balance omnibus budget, and you see that 183 being carried across. Well, that that's really irrelevant. Um, but... Going forward, what we talked about doing was having 
to the extent there's a shortfall up here, you know, your revenues plus your expenses, it'd be nice if there was an excess, but there's not. Um, to the extent that there's a shortfall that we also wanted to have a view to of other, um, other possible sources of funds, right? So kind of, you know, again, that sources and uses of funds idea. So some of this information would be the same, but the language around it might change. So that's something we'll mm -hmm. keep out. Okay, because I think that would be more helpful just to say, okay, what else is out there so, that we might be able to tap into? So, at uh, the town meeting, I guess we presented a balanced budget. Mm -hmm. And on here, you can see like a half a million dollar deficit for this year already projected. And then as you go forward, it goes up to almost two million, two million in four years from now. Um, when you're using the free cash stuff, that's funny you can't count on being there. It's funny that you kind of shortfall from not spending it in the budget. So why can't this be a balanced budget? Why, why do you figure, you know, it looks like, it, you know, this doesn't look good when you're starting out with the deficit every year getting bigger. So the, the 493, is that the, what is made up in the middle number here? In the middle section? Yeah, this yeah. yeah. Yes. it should be the yes, difference between So them. we're saying the 493 is the capital we haven't, the 300,000 for capital we haven't voted. Um, yeah, you're taking, you're taking almost, you take a 480,000 out of free cash, about offset that almost, almost half million for this year. But as you go forward, it is a lot bigger than any of these free cash and other things that you're kind of, the crapshoot that you're going to have or not. Right. So there's a couple things to be said. Um, first of all, it's in the nature of these five-year projections that you always end up in a sea of red ink. Um, uh, you've been advised by the Department of Revenue a number of times that do the do the five-year projection, but always know that it's going to look horrible uh, in year five or even shorter uh, because there because there are just too many variables that that you're making these assumptions, particularly if you're looking at revenue in a conservative way and you're looking at expenditures in a uh, fairly conservative way. Um, so it just, it just happens, you know, I've been doing these five-year projections uh, for 20 years now and they almost always show up as a sea of red ink at the, uh, at the end. I do find that to be a silly explanation though. I, I mean, I'm to have the Department of Revenue say, I mean, it's almost like they're saying, oh, well, don't even bother doing it because you're just going to be in the, I mean, well, uh, I mean, well, I, I, mean I, th I think I think that I think that I think that they're. Budget, I think that like what the sky is falling down by year five. Yeah. I mean, I think it's. You know, again, I agree with what David's saying that you're very conservative on the revenue, and you're also very conservative on the expenses, mm -hmm. which means usually overstating your expenses, and so you end up with a deficit. I do agree with what Bill is saying, though. I absolutely think we have to take that 183000 of free cash out of years 17 through 20 because it's understating what our bottom line problem is. Well, that, that was the point I was trying to make before, that we didn't um, work on that middle section. Yeah, oh, it, it, okay. absolutely, it needs to come out of there. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're just good. trying to find a better way to present it. And want to run it by you guys and stuff too. Okay. But yeah, point because that point was made I think at the at the last meeting too, Lynn. I know we keep making that point, but every time we look at this thing, it's still there. So that's what I, I guess we're concerned about, and this gets out to people, and it, it just makes our problem look better than it is. Mm -hmm. So what were you? Uh, let's see, where was I? Um, about the 493? Uh, about the 300,000, mm -hmm. actually. Um, so uh, Linda Sanderson and I have been working on the capital plan. Uh, and one of the things that, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about this in your regular meeting in more depth, but one of the things that we, uh, we uh, have been discussing is, is that it's nice to have the meals tax to uh, fund part of our capital, but it's insufficient to really address the capital backlog that the town has. And so we're looking at a different way of coming up with uh, revenue 
that would be sustainable and would uh, not impact too, uh, too greatly the tax rate, uh, that would make a real difference in um, addressing your capital needs for the town. So the 300000 I've put in there because that's how we treat capital now, but it, that we may rethink that uh, in the next couple of weeks as to whether that's an appropriate use of free cash or not. But that 300000 is on top of the money that's committed from the meals tax. 